Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Reveal with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, actually a, a Photography 101 episode, and we're going to talk about the problem of backlighting. So what is backlighting? We'll take a look at that window over there. See how bright it is? Now imagine if you had me in front of that window and you took a picture. The camera is going to meter for the whole image which means that I am going to be underexposed or I'll look like a silhouette. Now, I've had some requests for doing some kind of tutorials on simple point and shoot cameras. And so this tutorial is useful if you're using a simple point and shoot camera, or if you just got yourself a nice DSLR and you're going to be uh, using this, but you're not quite sure what to do with it, it's just finding the right controls. So you really want to read your manual, download the manual if you threw it out, and it's going to tell you where all these buttons are. So let's get into some screens and, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, this first scene is me just taking a picture um, out of a, towards the backyard of my house. And unfortunately, the windows are a little dirty. Uh, I actually did clean these windows about a week ago, but I didn't do them with bright sunlight, so I kind of have to do a better job. But you can see that it's properly exposed. This next scene shows my son, and you can see that in just a regular mode, with the camera metering for the entire scene, the background is fine, but he is completely underexposed. So how do we correct that? Well, there are really many different ways, and your camera may have all of these different ways, or some of them, and you may find that some work better than others for some situations. So you have to do a little experimenting. But first, on this particular camera, because we're going to be using this Olympus Stylus XZ2, because it gives us a lot of options, we're going to look at the top of the camera, and we can see the mode or the control dial. And the one thing that I want you to look at at this camera is that it has a function called Intelligent Auto. And a lot of newer compact cameras have that. So when the camera is in Intelligent Auto, it not only does a general exposure and that sort of thing, compensation, what it's going to do, it's trying to figure out the scene itself and it will determine if it's an action scene or a macro or a backlit scene or a variety of other scenes. So when we put it in that mode, you can see by this next picture that it has compensated somewhat. I'm not quite sure how it did it because it doesn't let you know, but it has compensated and it's put my son into a better exposure. Well, there's many other options too. So often, if you look at the back of your camera, there'll be another control dial, and that will have a bunch of functions on it, and one of them will look like a lightning bolt. If you don't have that lightning bolt on that control dial, look someplace else. It's probably uh, on some other button on the camera, or you may have to go to the menu. And that lightning bolt controls the flash. So here we have a lot of flash options, but the one that we're going to want to use is the one that's just the straight lightning bolt with nothing around it. And that means it's a fill flash, which says that the flash is going to go off even if the camera thinks it doesn't need to. So when we use that option, we actually get a pretty good result because our background, although not quite as um, exposed as well as it was in the past, is reasonably well exposed and my son certainly is exposed properly. Well, if we go back to that button again, what we're going to find is there's another control that sort of looks like a plus and minus in a box. Again, you might find it on this little control wheel, or you might find it someplace else on the camera, and that's called exposure compensation. On this camera, it's going to look like a little line on the bottom, which I'm highlighting here with this red box. And so we're going to increase the exposure compensation. In other words, overexpose the picture uh, compared to what the camera thinks it should be. And we get a properly exposed picture. Again, I'm kind of blowing out the background a little bit because I am overexposing. And he has a little bit of a glow to him because of that. But it still is a pretty acceptable picture. There are additional things that we can do too, again, according to your camera. And these usually are available when you're in program mode or aperture priority or manual mode or shutter priority or one of the little more sophisticated modes that many cameras will allow. 
and we can actually tell the camera how we want to meter the light. Do we want to look at the whole scene? Do we want to look at the whole scene but emphasize the center? Or do we want to look at just maybe a very tiny spot in the center and have the camera meter there? Well, we already know what the whole scene looks like because that was our first uh, picture that we looked at. But if we do a center averaging, what we see is that the exposure is a little bit better, but it's still underexposed because again, we're taking the whole scene into account, but we're emphasizing that center as far as our light meter is concerned. But if we go to spot metering, we get an even better result because now we're actually looking at just the very center of the frame. In this case, I think it was centering someplace around my son's neck for whatever reason, but that's, the, that's where it was picking up how much light or how much exposure do I have to uh, compensate for, and it makes all the adjustments automatically. So spot metering can be used. Now some cameras, especially point and shoots, will have a function called a face detection or a smile function or whatever. And here the little brain in the camera will specifically look for human faces. Actually, some cameras will actually look for pet faces. And they'll do a variety of things, but one of the things that it will do, in, depending on the camera, is that it will focus specifically on the face and in addition, some cameras will also try to expose for the face. So when we have this set up on this camera, we can see that the exposure is certainly better. And lastly, some cameras will offer scene modes. And if you go into the scene mode, you might find a mode that says backlit mode, or it might say backlit HDR. And these actually modes will do somewhat different things, but what they all do is they try to compensate for um, a foreground object and to make sure that that object, like a human, is in focus and, and is also in proper exposure um, compared to evaluating the whole scene. And in this particular camera, I think it takes a couple of shots at different exposures and then, and then uses this little computer to combine them together so you get a better exposed picture, which is the result that you're seeing right now. So let's take a look overall at the different options that we've had. Again, your camera may have all of them. It may have some of them, but I guarantee that it will at least have a couple of them. So, uh, so really, it's a very important thing to know. So here again is our first just generic picture, underexposed. Then we go into the intelligent auto where the computer's trying to figure out what to do. We then go into the fill flash, which actually probably worked the best on this particular camera, where we're forcing the flash to fire. We then go into exposure compensation where we're actually overexposing the image and uh, getting a little bit of a glow, but again, per making a picture that's usable. Um, the next one is center average um, light metering, where it's concentrating on the center, but it's really metering most of the frame. It does a somewhat better job. If we do spot metering when we're right in the center of the frame, an even better job. Face detection does an okay job too. And HDR gives us a little bit more definition. And I believe in the camera that I was using, took a couple of different images for the backlighting. This is again, backlit HDR. But I know it certainly did some computer time to process the image to get the image that you're seeing here. So there you have it a bunch of different ways to deal with backlit situations. Again, your camera may have all of them or some of them, um, but even the simplest camera like this little point and shoot will have something um, all the way up to your DSLR if you've just gotten your brand new DSLR. And a lot of times these cameras like these um, enthusiast cameras will have everything because they're, they're kind of a combination of the features of a DSLR um, and the convenience of a little point and shoot. So with that, I would say have a wonderful day. Please subscribe. I really would appreciate that. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I would really appreciate that too. And if you get some time, also please listen to my podcast. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's free on iTunes and other podcatching sites. Take care, everyone.